you know, it's not going to work very well for you if you're still crying and unable to focus on your target. So we're going to bring all that together. And then it's that integration with the helmet where we can truly do some novel things. Uh There are a lot of threats, uh, low level threats to high level threats. And really though, our operators have been left in this middle ground, right? Right now you either go with nothing or an N95 mask, or you have up to one of our respirators. In the case of DOD, it would be our M50 or M53A1. You know, so the operators, right, what are they facing? When they're downrange, it could be something like burn pits, uh, just the dust in the air, continued, uh, you know, smelling in fuel from helicopters. You know, again, depending on your job, there's constant stuff coming in. So what was that gap? I'm saying, hey, there's a N95 or a full face respirator. That's why we brought on the modular integrated tactical respirator, or as we call it, the MITER M1. Right, how does the MITER address it? Well, you really don't have a good available solution right now. If I tell an operator to wear his M53A1 respirator to the range, he's gonna be like, mm, I'll take my chances. Right, so we have guys in the shoot house all day. That lead is coming out of the weapon system, they're inhaling it, right? And just the reality of uh, the, the real world, right? What's different about the MITER though, as you can see here, Right, this guy weighs just over half a pound. So 0.55, uh, so super lightweight. You just gotta think from uh, uh, un unencumbering the warfighter, right? Again, that mask can be heavy, um, even though it's gonna protect them. This guy, super easy, lightweight. I can pull it in out of my pocket as I need. Uh, the other big difference here is it's a tactical operator's mask, right? So what I'm talking here is this filter can be mounted either side. Right? We have the filters that will either be a P100, uh, you know, particulate, which gives you that 99.97 protection, or, you know, we have the riot agent filter for CSCNOC that can give, in the worst case scenario, up to two hours of protection. You know, talking about that uh, for the shooter's mask, right, I can pop this filter off. I have my little uh, handy tool that will pop out my filter here, or I'm sorry, the filter cover, and then I can just switch, right? So now for a left-hand shooter, right-hand shooter, works either way. Uh, modular, we talked about the comms port, right? So we're gonna make sure we work with your communication systems. Uh, we also talked about, uh, you know, working with the helmet. So you can buy this with a head harness or it can work with your helmet. And again, yes, we love you to buy a Team Wendy helmet every day of the week, but if you have a Army issued helmet, a NATO issued helmet, we are gonna work with those major ones to ensure that, hey, you don't need a new helmet just to use the miter. Um, and what's really unique about it, you know, we've come up with several ways to uh, wear this. Right, the head harness would be your just wearing it daily, but when you got to wear it and integrate it with that tactical gear, that is where we have a very big advantage. Um, in this case scenario, you can see these magnet attachments. They will clip into a rail attachment, uh, but we're looking at several different ways to give the uh, user whatever he wants, right? Because the answer to an end user is always both. So whether they want to wear it on a head harness with a helmet, plugs into the rail, attaches uh, to the rail magnetically. Uh, we're working all these different variations and uh, that's where we get, continue to use that feedback from those end users. Um, we run it through the gambit and then like I said, we take it through these experimentation events and as our end users have recommendations, ideas, we go back, we listen and we continue to uh, build this. So, you know, it's been a real benefit and a pleasure to put this together and now we're gonna deliver it, but we're not done. We're gonna to continue to uh, do more with these capabilities and we're gonna to continue to listen. And uh, yeah, that's where the integration is gonna get really fun. And uh, I look forward to a couple of the next experimentation events. We got some fun stuff to show them.